Now, before anything, I just want you to do one thing. Subscribe first our YouTube channel and then like this video and then share this video. You done? Yes. My name is Paul Justin. So today I have an amazing video for you. The only thing you can do right now, just grab your snacks and then join with me to watch this amazing video. Thank you. You're visiting this side of the Middle East, the Arab side hasn't been a pattern in your foreign policy. What does it mean now? Uh, no, actually we, right from the anti-colonial struggle, we were working with the, with the Arabs, uh, Gamar Abdul Nasser, uh, King Muhammad V of Morocco, uh, Ben Bera, Bomidien, later on Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, these are the Arabs we are dealing with in the anti-colonial struggle. Uh, now, we had links with Saudi Arabia through the uh, people who go to, to Mecca. But after our struggles, we had about Dubai. Uh, Dubai had become uh, like an, ent an entrepot. But since 1994, Mr. President, you have shifted to the Israeli side and you have strengthened your ties with the Israelis and made your economic and political deals with the Israelis rather than with the Arabs. Uh, that's not true. Yes, we, we established uh, diplomatic relations with Israel, uh, but we did not abandon our position on uh, in terms of economic cooperation? Not, not, not only economic cooperation, even diplomatic. Our stand is uh, principled because originally we did not have relations with Israel because Israel refused to recognize the right of the Palestinians. However, when there was agreement on the two-state two -state solution, uh, then we started working with Israel. Uh, uh, we don't have much economic uh, dealings with Israel. Uh, we have dealings on security side, uh, military equipment and things like that. But we buy, we pay. It's not, uh, it's not aid or anything. For the time being, could you tell us something about your present visit and what type of cooperation you are seeking in this during you know, this visit? We have, uh, the, now, Gulf Airlines started coming to Uganda. Gulf Air, Qatari Airways, uh, some other airlines have forgotten their names. There are a number of them, they, they come. So, uh, building on that, then we started getting contacts with the, uh, the Qataris, uh, and that's how I came here. So it's not a new shift, it is maybe addition to to what we were doing already. Before leaving the Middle East, uh, last July when Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited you in Antebe and you were speaking in his presence, you used the word Palestine several times instead of Israel. And according to the news and the reports, he was very angry. Did you mean that? Did you mean it? And was there a message in it to the Israelis and the Arabs? You see, for us, as far as this part of the world is concerned, we are guided by the Bible. We read the Bible. I'm not the one who wrote the Bible. The Bible was written, I don't know, by, 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 by the people who wrote it. So all you people are mentioned there. So you stand by your words? Yes. That the, it is Palestine, the, 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 not Israel? The, 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 the Philistines. Philistines are mentioned. Uh, Judah is mentioned. Uh, Israel is mentioned. You are all there. Ibrahim is mentioned. So you stand by it? Yes, of course. It, it upset the Israelis? No, I, I don't know. I, they didn't tell me. They didn't tell me and I wouldn't uh, go from the facts to, 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 please, yes, to please people. When you were a rebel leader, freedom fighter, mm. you said once that you would never have ties with Israel as long as the Palestinians are homeless. But now you have ties with Israel for about 20 years. The, Israel, the Palestinians are still homeless. No, the, the point was that at that time, 
Israel had not recognized the Palestinians. Once they did that, then we, we really didn't have any good reason. Because also we don't agree with the other extremism on the Arab side, who are saying that uh, uh, Israel does not belong to the Middle East. Uh, I remember when I went to Iran, I, I talked with those people there, that that position of theirs we could not agree because it is in the Bible. For us, we follow the Bible. Israel is, is there. Uh, Philistines, people called Philistines, a man called Goliath. Yeah, so is it now Palestine or Israel? It, it, can, it, it is both because they were all there. It is both because remember uh, uh, David fought with Goliath. The one was a Philistine, the other one was, which I suspect Philistine must have something to do with the Palestine. The, the word sounds... Uh, During more than three decades, there must be something that you are very proud of to, to oh, boast. You mean or our, there must be something our, that is our, very concerning to you about the way you ruled Uganda. Our, our, our achievements and so yes, on. Yes, yes. Uh, you, you see, the uh, Africa, uh, in, including Uganda, are very rich countries. They have got a lot of natural resources, uh, there are ancient societies with, with a very old civilization, but the problem has been the organization of the society. Uh, the society was, it was organized in a pre-capitalist way, traditional way. So, President, can we talk about the achievements you have done for Uganda in the last three that's what I'm. That's what I'm coming to because the issue was to transform a traditional pre-industrial society to the modern era. And I can tell you that we have achieved a lot. We have, first of all, uh, modern education. As I speak today, the population of Uganda is like 40 million. More than 25% of them are in schools primary schools, secondary schools, universities, uh, through universal education. On the side of health, that's how the population has jumped from 14 million uh, in 1986 to now 40 million. Uganda is still one of the poorest countries in the world. Uganda still has tremendous problems in terms of infrastructure, sanitation, health issues, all of this is still there. Yeah, they are still there, but we have moved a long way. A long way. How much more time you need after 31 years let, to finish let, off this job let, and to first, transform Uganda? Let's first talk about yes. the, 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 the mileage covered. Uh, the kilometers of roads we have covered uh, for tarmacking are now approaching 6,000 kilometers from about 800. The, for the first time, we have got surplus electricity. Uh, the telephones, these small phones. So, President, these are relative figures, and we can talk also about the other side, the, the empty side of the cup. Mm. Uh, we still have almost uh, a fifth of the population under the poverty line. We still have, as I said, uh, homelessness in Uganda. We still have a lot of lack of sanitation and infrastructure. But let's move aside, move uh, forward from no, this. No, but before we leave that, before we leave that, the people under poverty uh, in 1990 were 56 percent. The ones now under poverty are 19 percent. Yes, that's one fifth, but it, we have covered the four fifths. So if your mathematics is working well, then uh, it should help you. I hope, we ha I hope Uganda has done uh, similar progress on other fronts. Let's talk about the political side, the freedoms. Mm -hmm. uh, Human Rights Watch, in its latest report, criticized Uganda's uh, government's dealings in terms of human rights, uh, suppression of uh, free speech, putting uh, uh, dissidents in jail. Uh, we have the case of uh, Stella Niazi, who is still in jail because she just expressed herself. And we have the opposition leader who has been in jail several times. And we have the government 
cracking down on opponents and preventing people from uh, free rallying freely by law, uh, more than five people should have the consent and the agreement of the police before they can express themselves in the street. The Uganda is one of the most democratic countries in the world. Uh, in terms of free speech, we have something like 250 private radios which say whatever they want. We have uh, so many television stations, private. Uh, I don't know how many you have here in Qatar, private ones. I don't know, you could, you could tell me. I only see Al Jazeera, but for us, we have so many. The empowerment of women, we've got so more, more, many women compared to so many countries in leadership. Why is activist Stella Niazi in jail just because she expressed herself? Well, if you are an activist and you commit an offense, because rights, to enjoy rights, you must also respect the rights of others. You cannot trample on the rights of others and you say it is my right to abuse other people, to insult other people. No. Rights go with responsibilities. If you, if you know anything about democracy. Why was the opposition leader Kizza Besigye put in jail several times because during the time of the elections? Because he, he, he broke some laws. Like what? Uh, for instance, in order to have elections, you must have a, a regulator, uh, the, the, the election commissioner, who says now this political party, it is your time, time to hold the rally here. You there, tomorrow here. Now, if you don't follow that, you will have chaos. And we, can, we cannot allow chaos. Just because you, you are pretending to, to be a political leader, you must follow order. More than just jail and cracking down on dissent, we have even bloodshed in Uganda. The what? In bloodshed. Bloodshed? Yes, in western Uganda. Mm. Uh, in Ruwenzoruru area. Ruwenzori. Yes, just a few months ago, mm. more than 100 people were killed by security forces. Uh, who attacked a traditional cultural kingdom in the area, mm. uh, saying that that place has terrorists inside it. Yes. How, what do you say to this? Terrorists. The, 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 that issue is in court, and according to our, our law, when something is in court, I'm not allowed to comment. The court will tell us whether those people were arrested for nothing or not. We're talking about those who were killed, not those who, were in, who are now in court. Yes, even the ones who were killed, whether they were killed for no reason, we shall find out from the court, because it is, it is in the court now. Mm -hmm. there is, we call it a principle of uh, subjudice. I, I, because if I, if I start saying they were wrong, they were this, they were this, they were this, giving the reasons, then I'm interfering with the court. Yeah, but with the but international what, I can, what I can tell you is that since the matter is in the court, you bring all your cameras, come to the court, and film what those people are saying. You, you will get the facts. Yes. Mm. I invite you. But we here and our audience, in the inter international audience of Al Jazeera, we don't know what happened. We're not going to be in the court to see it. We want you, Mr. President, to explain to us why you sent your troops to that area, to Kasese, were, the, to the, the, kill the, the, more than 100 the, people. Because they were breaking the law, they were making a sense. In what manner? In what manner? They were, that will come in the court. They were just guarding the palace and they didn't even have weapons. No, first, to the first of all, uh, the kings in Uganda, we have got many kings. They are not guarded by militias. They are guarded by the national. Just because he is guarded, you think that's uh, dissent? Uh, well, I'm just giving you facts. Kings are guarded by the uh, national army, not by a militia. So if you, talk, if you say there was a militia guarding then already you're, you're getting your cell But they're not armed, they have machetes, they, they just wanted to protect the palace. Those facts will come in the court. The court is open, you're most welcome. According to the reports we have, the king was persecuted and those people were killed because they opposed the president in the election, because they are not pro the no, ruling government. Not, not at all, there are so many, uh, 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 and if they opposed uh, the, the, the president, what were the, the, the militia doing? What were the militia doing? Do, do political parties have militias? According to what you hear in the democracy. If a militia is not armed and if it is not killing people, then what's the problem, Mr. President? Where you come to the court, you would hear why they were, those people were... Uh, the man who led the assault on Kasese, 
His name is Peter Elwelu. He was a, a brigadier in the army at the time. And instead of him being now in the court, he was promoted general and he is now the commander of the land forces. Yes. Why, if you have those people in the court, why don't you also have the man who opened fire on your citizens alongside those people in the court now to answer to the questions? That, that means he was doing his, his, his duty. Duty to kill? To, 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 he killed more to, than to, 100 to, people. To deal with... And now he's promoted. Yes, I, I, I am the one who promoted And him. two days ago, the US, the US government refused. It bl they blocked his, uh, his going to Malawi to attend a conference on security because of that. I don't know about the United States. Uh, the, the Uganda is big enough for Major General Eruero to operate there. I, I don't know why he's dying to go to the United States, but no, the, he's not the, going. He was going to Malawi, and he was blocked by the Americans because they are supervising that conference uh, because of what he did in Kasese. So he's uh, accused. Well, I am not uh, a, a prefect about American actions. I am uh, a leader of Uganda, and I'm telling you that uh, Ereru did his duty, and there is now peace in that area. So he, it was pacified. It was, it was because, it because was it was crushed. It was definitely justified, but all this will come in the court. So, President, it seems that Ugandans are a little bit fed up with you because we are reading a lot of reports about this Facebook revolution, people trying to go to the streets even though they are prevented, they are afraid, of course, of the mm. security forces, but they want to do, they want to create something like, you know, the Arab Spring in Uganda. People are fed up because it's more than three decades of your leadership and term after term after term it's only one man ruling the country and the world around uganda has changed all presidents around uganda have gone mm. but you so uh, do you uh, do, uh, do you agree with me that there is a little bit of you know fatigue uh, of your uh, leadership have you heard of something called democracy have you heard of it i heard of it uh, democracy means you elect the people you like we had elections about one year ago, and I got, the, my party got 62% uh, of the vote. And uh, in fact, it would have been more if it was not for quite a bit of spoiled votes. So that does not show that uh, the people of Uganda are fed up of our party because they have voted for us five times, winning free competition. So, if you think that uh, uh, the majority of Ugandans are fed up of, of the NRM, then uh, the vote doesn't show that. Electing you five times doesn't mean that the election was fair and free. And that's what the opposition says. Mm. The opposition says you were elected five times because you're in control, you're in the government, and you control the military and you can easily manipulate the elections. So why did we lose some districts in the elections? Why did we what? Why did we lose elections in some districts? Oh, well, that's just to justify, the, to make it look like a real democracy. You oh, have to lose something. It, it, it was arranged that, that we, 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 we hand some districts to, to the opposition. Why, Mr. President, have you... Don't run, you think that is a ridiculous... Why have you run for five terms? Why? The, the issues of... Of, of countries are issues of destiny, not mere appearance and uh, theater. It's not theater. It is about. So you needed five terms. It, to, it's about to what, do what? what should be done. To do what? Yes. Tell, tell me. To, to start from zero to where we are now. Start from zero because we are at zero. We are now. Uh, able to do things by but ourselves. Why in other democracies like the United States and Western Europe, why in those democracies we don't have one man ruling for five terms because he needs to, to do stuff? I mean, that is because those countries have got a different history. But there, like are, there are other countries. They, they, you, you talked about to Israel. Let me give you the example of Israel. Mm -hmm. Israel is near you here. It is a democracy. Their leaders, what they do uh, since they created their state, they maximize their leadership resources. Because leadership is also a resource. They, they, they have the old leaders, like the one who died recently, uh, Perez. Shimon, Shimon Perez. Perez. They have the young ones 
who come who come later and they all compete okay why don't we have more than one leader in uganda they, they all Mr. president why don't we have more than one leader in uganda because I, you I, have raised uganda you have been end, my party has been winning is, is, is that an offense to win to win nope. elections no nope. uh, what are you worried about yeah but suppose shimon perez had been winning uh, in Israel. Oh, it never happened in Western democracy. Well, that's their problem because they don't so have... So they have a problem? They, they have a problem because they don't have enough consensus. If we have consensus... Or maybe they have many leaders, more leaders. Even in Uganda, we have many leaders. Uh, even in Israel, they had many leaders, but the parties uh, made some mistakes and people voted against them. But if my party has not made serious mistakes, why should I commit suicide? Say I should kill myself because my party has not made a mistake, because my party led its people from uh, through liberation. It has made them through e economic recovery. Let's go back to the philosophy behind you deciding to run for term after term. Is that because you think you are the best to rule Uganda? Because the, the, the issues to, to solve are serious and it's the and best. No no it's, other man can it, solve it, them. It is the best that we know. Others come and present themselves. But when the population looks at them, says, no, 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 this party. They're not qualified. Uh -huh. They're not qualified. Yes. Okay. According to the population, not according to me. So what does this say about your leadership? You have been ruling this country for about 31 years and you couldn't raise other leaders to take over after you because no, you're not going to be the, here forever. The, the other, what the does other. it say about your leadership, about the educational system or probably about the political system that no other Ugandan has been elevated during your presidency to be equally capable of leading the country? The, the other leaders are there, but to maximize, to maximize uh, uh, the leadership uh, input, we use all our leaders, the young ones, the old ones. Now they want to come. They want I, to come I, forward, but I, they're not. They're I, not I, I allowed. Call, they're this, not allowed. This is not about wanting. This this is the whole problem. We are talking about wanting. I want. It's not you wanting. It is what the situation demands. You are trying to deal with the situation. You are, you are not in a theater, just acting. So the leaders are there. We, we are a population of 40 million. We have got 130 districts. All, the, all, the, all those districts need leadership. The, the, the parliament needs the leadership. The ministries need, need leadership. It's not... So a, the country needs leadership. Yes. One man cannot rule the country forever. Not forever. Is, but, 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 but according to the, the peoples, as long as you have got regular elections, then you don't have any point other than uh, concentrating on the who rather than the what. For us, we concentrate on the what, what is to be done. And it is the what that gives us the who. Mr. President, you said that the Ugandans, they don't see anybody else as qualified as yourself to rule the country. And now, mm. when they go for the elections, after five terms, mm. you are now 71 or 72, I don't know. 72. In three years, you will be, you will reach the age limit mm. and you can't run for another term. Mm -hmm. Who is there in the country now, qualified, capable, sitting in the wings, the people, waiting to be the, the, the next the, leader? The, the people of Uganda are there, they will select who, according to the what. You remember, you, you spend all your time, I always watch your Al Jazeera, spend all your time on the who, the who, the who. You could spend a little bit more time on the what, because what changes things is what is done, what is to be done. So my people will decide on the who according to the what, what the problem they are, they, they are facing, which needs to be solved. According to some of the reports I read, you have demanded to be given the right to choose the next leader of Uganda, you, no, your I, own successor. I, I, I cannot demand That's that true. because it is the people, the people are there. Okay. The people have been electing me in spite of Al Jazeera and... Uh, are you going to run for an, another term? There are reports that you are about to change the constitution so that it can allow you to run for another term. In history, how, how can you guarantee that you will not be remembered as a dictator instead of a democratic president? 
Why is activist Stella Niazi in jail just because she expressed herself? According to the reports we have, the king was persecuted and those people were killed because they opposed the president in the election. On this episode, we ask Ugandan President Museveni if he plans to leave office when his term is up. And if so, who will be his successor? Or will he in fact try to remain in power, as some of his opponents speculate? According to some of the reports I read, you have demanded to be given the right to choose the next leader of Uganda, you, no, your I, own successor. I, I cannot demand That's that, true. because it is the people, the people are there. Okay. The people have been electing me in spite of Al Jazeera and... Uh, Are you going to run for an, another term? We, we follow our constitution. We follow so you're not going to run for another term? We follow our constitution. Because you reach the age limit in three years and you will not we run. We follow the constitution of That's, Uganda. Can you explain that? <laughs> That's what I've told you. But there are reports that you are about to change the constitution so that it can allow you to run for another term. I've told you. Is that going to happen? We follow the constitution of Uganda. And that is the will of the people of Uganda. Are you going to change the constitution? I cannot change the constitution because I don't have that power. But is this something that is in the discussion now in Uganda? That is speculation and I don't have time for speculation. Reports also say that you are preparing your own son, who is now very high, highly elevated in the army and he's your also special advisor on certain issues. Mm -hmm. uh, your wife also is a minister. Uh, she's sitting next to you in the cabinet. Reports that you are preparing one of these two to be the next leader of Uganda. What do you say to this? Why should I prepare them? It is the people of Uganda to choose the one uh, to, they want. If I ask the people of Uganda, maybe they will say something different because we are reading what the opposition says and what the Ugandan why, say. Why, and it why is different you, from what you, you say. Why do you read what the opposition says? Why don't you read? You said you asked me to ask the people. The people say something different. The, 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 the people are not only the opposition. So I should ask only the half of the people no, who, no, no. who ask the support opposition. you. You are supposed to have balanced reporting. That's what you are supposed to be doing. Ask the the opposition. The pro-government the pro people. You ask the opposition, but also ask the, the other people. Those people are there. The people of Uganda are there. They will elect the, the person they want. Uh, there's no way I can choose for them, my wife or my son, or even other people forget about. Uh, but right now, members of your family are closing, very close to you now, closer to you than anybody else. There are reports saying that you are now focusing on your own relatives, and this is nepotism, giving them higher uh, uh, seats in the, in the government. Isn't that nepotism, Mr. President? That's not nepotism. Those, the, the few members of my family who are involved, are involved on their own merit. My wife, against my advice, she went and stood for the elections and, and had the biggest majority in the whole country. Because she is your wife? Maybe. We, yes, because, yes, it, it, it's part of the She got the majority because, because she's your wife? Because the population uh, appreciate what, what my you family, do, yeah. what I have done on, on, on part of my family. So it's not her qualities, it is her relation to you that gave her the vote. No, it is also her That's quality. That's what you said. It oh. is also her quality. It is also her quality. But of course, in, in perception, mm. sometimes mm. they can associate you with the... With so maybe your son will be elected leader after you because he's close to you, he's your son. That is for them because I told you that when my wife wanted to join politics, I didn't support it, mainly because it is a bit strenuous. I was concerned about her being strained, you know, running up and down, but the population insisted and she was elected. Big majority. Are you afraid of Facebook now? There is this, call, this thing called Facebook revolution in Uganda, and we have this TVO anonymous guy trying to mobilize the population. Are you afraid of a, a kind of Arab Spring happening in Uganda? No, no, we, we, we shall, because they, they tell lies, we tell the truth. So that's all, that's all we do. They tell lies use, using the, the, the... So opposition tells lies, mm. government tells truth. Yes. That's what you are saying. Yes. Why? Because, because they are... Everything a, the government they, says they, is true. They, they Everything bad, the opposition says they, is they lies. Are, they, many of the opposition are poor leaders. Uh, because, you know, leading a country like Uganda is not simple. It needs sacrifice. It needs people... First, in the, in the past, we had to die to fight. It was not just uh, 
you had to sacrifice. But even now, we have got to sacrifice, to spend a lot of time to, 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 to go to the population, to, to solve their so problem. So only, only the government and the ruling party sacrifices, the opposition doesn't sacrifice. How can we say this? It, they it, are half it, of the population. If they, they, they are not half. We always okay, get, they are a big, a big chunk of the population. Yes. The, How the, can they all be mean and, and not nationalist? Not and all, not, not all the opposition, but some elements of the opposition. Mm. Uh, they tell lies, uh, a lot of lies. Uh, that's how we defeat them. Because when we come, we say the truth. So even this uh, internet, uh, whatever they are doing, we, we shall defeat them by... Who, who is TVO? Who is this uh, Okavanga or Okavinga? Who, who is he? Uh, there are some... The they, are known, they are known by the intelligence people. I, I, I oh, don't, really? Uh, so why don't you capture him? They, they, they will... Uh, they will uh, well, I, I'm not an intelligence person, so okay. I, I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, talking about capturing and people who are, you know, at large, let's talk about LRA. Mm. the Lord Resistance Army. Mm. Where is Joseph Kony now? We defeated them in Uganda. How many times have you defeated them? Oh, yes. We many times. Uh, we so why aren't they finished? Well, we defeated them. In How many defeats do you need to uh, finish them? We, we defeated them in Uganda, in South Sudan. Everywhere. In the Central African Republic. And they are only a few hundred. They fled armed men. to. Yeah. They fled to wherever they fled. Where are they now? Uh, the, the, they are hiding some some places, uh, which we. Uh, Yesterday uh, there was a report about Ugandan troops winding down their presence in the Central African Republic. Yes. Because they say they have finished the job. What the, What do you mean by no, finished no, no, the no. job? The, the, what does it mean? What happened was that the, the, the new American government, because for us. Coin, coin is not a problem to Uganda. We defeated him. He cannot come back. If he comes back, he will be dead. But we, we had to help our African brothers to hunt. Because fighting in the forest is not easy. And there are those who accuse him. And we are doing it with the, with the partnership of the Americans. Now, the new American government said they didn't want to continue. So we said, okay. So, are you saying, Mr. President, that Joseph Kony is no longer a Ugandan problem? He's not. He has not. He's been, no longer. He has not. He has never. He has not been for a long time because we defeated him out of Uganda. So, why are you chasing him in other countries? To, to help our African to help. brothers. To help our African brothers. Why, why are we in Somalia? Have you heard that we are in Somalia? We'll talk about that. Yes. You are accused of using Joseph Kony and his uh, few hundred men as a pretext, excuse to go into other countries and send your army to other countries like South Sudan, Central African Republic and Congo to do what you want there, to help whoever you want to help, to interfere in the, for, in the affairs of those countries. And we will talk about South Sudan in this respect. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we are going How to, do you answer to this? Now we are, going to, we are now going back. Let's see how Uganda suffers by not being in Central Africa. How Uganda suffers? Yes, let's see whether Uganda will lose anything by not being in Central Africa. But you're gaining something by sending your troops, interfering in the affairs of others. And we'll talk about South Sudan. Mm. Your troops have been in South Sudan uh, in, in 2014 and 2015. Mm. And you have sided with the government of South Sudan, with a part of the government against the other. And you have, by that, you have prolonged the civil war in South Sudan. And Thousands and thousands of people were killed and you were fighting alongside one of the two sides. So you were actually um, putting more uh, fuel to the civil war in South Sudan. Mm, not at all, because what happened was that when the fighting st started in South Sudan, uh, th there was a regional meeting which called for a ceasefire. Nobody should do, continue fighting so that we get a, a political solution. Now, one of the factions refused and started fighting and was coming to Juba. Is that, is that enough, enough excuse for you to send troops there? Yes, 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 because... Why did you side with Salva Kiir against Riyak Mishar? Because the one who broke the ceasefire was the other one. But you're not, you're not, the, you're not the, the regional force there to impose things on the Sudanese. They are fighting each other. Why do you side with one of them? First Why of, did you first, send your troops to all. keep the peace and not to fight alongside one 
Because the other one was on the offensive. According to you. But according to Riyak Mashar, he is not on the offensive. According you, to him, he is defending himself. Offensive means you are moving forward. I mean, it's your own judgment. No, no, it's not judgment. This is uh, dynamics on the ground. You move forward. Uh, if you you observe ceasefire, you stay in one place. So he was he, he was uh, uh, breaking the ceasefire uh, in order to come and attack the and town. And it is your your role, Uganda, the poor country that has uh, doesn't have enough resources for its own infrastructure for the well-being of its own people. It is you take it upon yourself to go into another country to stabilize another country to fight against one group against another what kind of policy with is the this? african people how is this going to benefit you with, with the african people we have been poor but we have been defending ourselves we defeated the whites even when we were poor and we were helping each other when there is somebody who is making trouble uh, like the, the, that riyak mashar fellow was doing we stood with the the, 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 the the regional position, which was stand still, cease fire, don't move. You sent your troops to southern Sudan or South Sudan without the agreement of your parliament and without a mandate by the African Union. And that's because, according to the reports, because you have interests with Salfakir, because Uganda is importing and exporting uh, goods between uh, Uganda and South Sudan. So it's economic interests, interference, no mandate by AU, no mandate by the parliament. Well, first of all, you can have bilateral relations between two states. Okay? Do you, do you know anything about international law? A little bit. Yeah. Yes, a little yeah. bit. So you use, use that a little bit to, 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 to improve your understanding. An elected so you need the agreement of, uh, an, by constitution, an, you need the agreement an, of an, the parliament. An, an, an elected government mm -hmm. can have uh, uh, a bilateral agreement, forget about the regional, even bilateral, uh -huh, to help each other. But within the framework of a region, African Union is an organization that supervises this kind of things. In Somalia, the in other countries. The ceasefire which had, uh, which had been called was by the, the regional summit, the IGAD. We had an IGAD summit. So let's talk about your troops in Somalia. They have been there for the better part of a decade, maybe an entire decade, and mm. they haven't achieved much. Are you going to withdraw them? No, they, are, they have stabilized Somalia. Uh, it's our, not stable uh, they have until sta now. They have st stabilized Somalia. Yes, there are still some problems, mm -hmm. but the situation would have been much worse. Uh, they have stabilized Somalia. Uh, our only concern is that uh, Somalia has not built their national army. That's what we encourage them to do. But otherwise, the population, in, if you go to Mogadishu, the population is, 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 is full. And they have, according to reports, your army has committed atrocities in Somalia. They have killed civilians uh, I, I, inside Mogadishu it, it, several it, times. It, they it have is, caused a continuation of the conflict instead of putting an end to the conflict. No. The, the, yes, we have stopped uh, Al Shabaab from taking over. Uh, we are very sorry about that. If, if you support, if you support Al Shabaab, uh, then I'm sorry for you. So you, you must be disappointed if you, if you support Al Shabaab. It is true that we have we have defeated Al Shabaab, stopped them from taking over. But Al Shabaab is uh, an extremist group, contrary to our uh, African culture of tolerance. We live, we, we, we live and let live. This is how we live in that area. So you're there to, so it's a moral war it against Al-Shabaab. It is, it is moral and ideological for Al-Shabaab. We don't have a border with, uh, with, with Somalia uh, because you said South Sudan, we are, going there, we are there for interest. Now <laughs> there is Somalia, so you, 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 yes, are, but you, also you, are, you are logic. There is this other explanation going around that actually sending your troops abroad uh, like in the, in, the, in, the, in the case of Somalia, is a source of income because these troops get very big salaries. Uh, actually, Uganda has been sending its army into several African countries and this has created, according to the reports, the accusations, a great source of income for the country. So are you selling no, 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 the not, services of your troops no, not to at all. get back? No, no, not at all. When we were in, in, in South Sudan, we are there at our own cost. 
You but have that's not, because you, you have you, economic ties with South Sudan. It, it seems you have, no, you, you have not heard of something called uh, fratern, for, uh, solidarity. Fraternal solidarity. That could be a, a banner for it, yeah. No. That could be, that could be the cover for my, it. My dear friend, when we fought the Portuguese in Angola, in Mozambique and Angola, the frontline states, Tanzania, Zambia, who was paying them? When we stood against uh, Ian Smith in Rhodesia, who was paying those countries? They were, they were actually losing. This is the tradition of, of African freedom fighters. I am part of the African freedom fighters. If you have not seen any, I am one. Here you have, you have one. Okay. Uh, now, Bloomberg. Now, remember, put it in your logic of Al Jazeera, that Africans will defend their freedom. Even though they are poor, you are saying because you are poor, you, you cannot defend your when you, you, you when your you, soldiers you, you, you are right, Mr. President. No, you, you are the one who said that because you are poor, you cannot defend your rights. And I have told you that we have fought and defeated the colonialists, even in our poverty. Okay, that was a long time ago. But let's talk about now when your troops are being highly paid, while Somali troops are almost not paid at all, when your troops in Somalia are highly paid, they are sending millions of dollars back to, their, to, to Uganda. That's no longer freedom fighting. That's no longer humanitarian help. I, I have and to, let uh, me refer to this, uh, to this article by Bloomberg, uh, May 10, 2016, under the title, Uganda Stop Export Mercenaries. Not only soldiers. Uganda is also encouraging its own citizens to go and be mercenaries. According. Mercenaries where? Yeah, it's, it's here. It's mentioned in this, uh, in this article by Bloomberg, and it seems to be very well documented. It, they call it private military contractors. That's the euphemism for it. And it here says in Iraq, Ugandans protect U.S. diplomats in Baghdad and Basra. They also guard businesses and aid workers in Afghanistan and Somalia. Like, it's a long article talking about this and it, it has lots of figures in it. So it's been going on for many years. Uganda sending its own citizens to be mercenaries across the world for payment. No, the, the, those, it, are, those are security companies, private security companies. Yes, but you know about them and it is yes, going we, on. Yes, we, we know about them. And uh, the, the, you see, the, what, what, what is a fact is that because of our, our liberation struggle, because we fought wars and defeated them by our own means. So we have a tradition of fighting so you have a surplus of fighters to send N to no, other countries? No, it's not a surplus. It is uh, uh, our people have that uh, uh, courage and experience. And they want to use it everywhere. So when, they, when there, are, there, are, there are these security groups, they don't go to fight in, in those wars. Those are not wars. It is to guard uh, houses, to guard uh, infrastructure, to guard uh, uh, the, the same article says... Haven't you seen, don't you have secu private security organizations here in Qatar? You have 20,000 Ugandan security guards across the world. That's a, that's a big figure for mm -hmm. Uganda, a small mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. And the article says armed guards are Uganda's top export mercenary remittances surpassed coffee exports in 2009. Coffee has been the biggest source of income for Uganda. Now mercenaries, the income coming from them that one is an, has surpassed that one coffee. Is, that one is an illiterate person. The biggest export, Who wrote this? The, the biggest export of ours is industrial products to the regions of East Africa, industrial products. The next one is, is, is tourism. Coffee is not the top exporter, export, export earning. It is something. It so, used to be, yeah. So that, that's obviously a, 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 a lie. Mm. Tourism, tourism will get 1.5 billion from tourism dollars. So that fellow is a liar. Going back to you, President Museveni, an Arab poet once wrote or said that you certainly get bored when you live for eight decades. You're now in your eighth decade. Are you bored of being in the 
presidential seat for uh, so uh, much time. Uh, uh, are uh, you are you are you about to decide to get to retire? I, I, I am not. I am not. If I retire, it is not because I am bored, because my, our, our history is that we are mission oriented. Each time we have a new mission, a new mission for our people. Somebody with a mission cannot be bored. So how much, how much more time do you need to finish the job? You, you always say, I, I, I still, I want it to is, finish is, the job. How much me. time do you it need? It is not me. It is our country, our party. We are the ones who look at our situation and decide what to do. You say you have done a lot for Uganda. Mm. What else? What is the major thing that you want to do next before you leave power? We have identified 10 strategic bottlenecks that have constrained Uganda and Africa to some extent. I don't have time to go through them, but I can tell you about two of them. And it would be good if you had the document and you, you, you read them. Because I, I always see you with your friends on the, see, see this one, this group, uh, Al Jazeera. You really dispense a lot of uh, opinions and so on, but <laughs> many of them are wrong, unfortunately. So if you want something about Africa, uh, about Uganda, 10 strategic bottlenecks, which have been a problem. One has been ideological disorientation, where people emphasize sectarianism of religion, of tribe. Those problems you are talking about in South Sudan, in what they, they, are, they are caused by that ideological disorientation. In Uganda, we are fought to that. That's why, that's why Uganda is peaceful. Secondly, the narrow markets of Africa. Uganda is 40 million people, but that's not wide enough market to support modernization. So one of our programs has been integration, regional integration. That has been one of the bottlenecks, a, a, a narrow internal market, a small, the fragmentation of Africa into small markets because of colonialism. Our program has been integration. It's happening, East African it's community. It's happening. Yeah. East African community. So once again, Mr. Co President. Co common market of, common market of Africa, mm. of Eastern Africa. That's, that's your third, next goal. The, the third one, the third, the third bottleneck. There are 10, but I've just mentioned the city because of time. The third one is, for instance, infrastructure development. You cannot have a modern economy if you do not have, uh, for instance, electricity. Enough electricity and cheap electricity. So our program of our party has been to deal with those bottlenecks, how 10 many, of them. How many of them are still there for you to achieve? I, I don't have time to. If you read my writing, you you see so Just tell me one of them that one thing you still want to achieve before you leave power. Not before, whether I leave power or not, the target of our party is to have integration, deal with all the, the 10 bottlenecks. I've told you three, the others I, I don't have time. All the 10 bottlenecks including the one of integration, East Africa integration. Okay, let's talk about you personally. Do you think you have achieved everything that you dreamt of in your young years? Not, I have not achieved everything, but I have uh, achieved some uh, of, the, of the targets, of the aspirations. Mm. And the aspirations of the Ugandans. Yes, and the aspirations of Uganda and Africa. Mm. How do you want to see Africa in the future? We want to see the political integration of East Africa. Our aim is to make East Africa one country, one state. It's now integrated economically, but together with our partners, we want East Africa to be, become one country. It is stated in our documents, all our documents. Then have a common market of the whole of Africa. In history, how, how can you guarantee that you will not be remembered as a dictator instead of a democratic president? As what? 
how would you guarantee that in the future, in history, mm. you won't go down as a dictator instead of a democratic president? A dictator who is elected five times, that's, that must be a, a wonderful dictator. That must be a special one. Elected five times with all his big majority, that must be a wonderful dictator. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you so much for watching this video. The only thing you can do right now, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel, share this video, and like this video. My name is Paul Justin. Thank you so much.